Thanks for your company. The details now. Families of the three missing Takrade girls are demanding an independent forensic analysis of human remains retrieved by police from a suspect in the suburb of Kasurodo. A team of experts from the police CID retrieved the bones from a suspect inside the rented home of suspect Samuel Udotok Wills, who has been held in connection with the crime. According to police, DNA from the bones will be compared to samples from families of the girls to establish if the remains are those of the victims. The family say they will not cooperate with the police, adding they doubt the police will carry out a genuine examination. Father of one of the missing girls, Priscilla Mantipia Crunchy, spoke to my colleague, Kujo Yangson. After pondering over the whole issue, I've come to realize that uh, I don't believe in whatever has happened, that my daughter is dead, and that the skeleton bones found in that man who was a cesspit can be that of my daughter. One, the reason being not no less a person than the interior minister, the gender minister, Mr. Brian Achampong. I don't know his uh, status. Minister of State uh, in charge of security, national security. Yes. And then, Madam Tiwa, they all have confirmed to us that the girls are alive and they are in safe hands. That they are doing all that they could to go and retrieve them. So, for them to turn around just some few moments to come and tell us that uh, they are finding some coughs, some uh, bones in a certain manhole, we don't believe it. When the, the girls die, did the suspect kill them before he was captured and sent to uh, jail? And if it happened before he was arrested, how come? They were able to tell the nation that the girls are alive. So I don't believe whatever is going on. So I cannot avail myself to that DNA test they are going to do. That is my decision. So from what you're saying, uh, Samuel Wills was arrested on the 22nd of December. Your daughter disappeared the day before, the 21st. So you're saying that you don't believe he had enough time to kill your daughter before he was arrested? Yes, I don't believe. Because even 31st, when he, was, when he uh, broke jail, he managed to call me and tell me, he told me that they don't kill uh, kidnap victims. All that they need is money. So he confirmed to not I alone, about three of us, that including my two, children, uh, two uh, young boys, that the girl is alive. And that for security reasons, he cannot allow us to talk to her that time. You see? And from that time onwards, we've been hearing that the girls are alive, the girls are alive. So all this why were they deceiving us? And if they were deceiving us, how true is this uh, test going to be? You see, I don't have confidence in that test. That is why I say I won't avail myself because from onset, the police and the uh, BNI or security agencies, including ministers, they have been deceiving us. So if even this test is being is conducted, I don't believe... Well, security analysts... Be allowed uh, what is suspected of you know, uh, a criminal mm. uh, investigation, such as this. Uh, I'm not sure, even in the US, uh, these things have been in Britain, these things have been all over the world. It happens. And so, um, I mean, I, I tend to, you know, share in the pain of the family, and that notwithstanding. Uh, if we say the police shouldn't do it, international, I mean, uh, 
that that would not be the right way to go. So I think they would have to tone down and uh, allow the police to do what is uh, needful. Mm. If the police do what is expected and they think that they don't accept it, they, I mean, uh, these things are allowed. They would be, uh, they, they, uh, they can go ahead and get other forensic uh, you know, laboratories to run checks to see whether it is true, the, the findings are true or the findings are not true. I think they, 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 we, the states, all of us will require them to allow the police to take samples from them so that we, we can bring closure to this. If it is not the, the young girls, we know. If it is the young girls, we know. So we know where we are as a country when it comes to this uh, three girls ones. But let's, let's remember uh, that uh, the subsequent to, uh, you know, subsequently, subsequent to this particular one, all other kidnapping or missing persons case have been resolved. And so this particular one, this painful one, uh, probably took all of us as a country of that. I mean, we, are, we all of us weren't expecting uh, such a thing to happen until somewhere last year when they went on a demonstration in Takradi, when their states enjoyed your multimedia and all the other networks got to fall. It took all of us off guard, and it looks like the police, I'm not, I don't speak for them, but from my interaction with them, they, these are not the normal, conventional crimes they deal with. And so, uh, literally, they are like, this. but let me be quick to put it out there, that usually, in other international jurisdictions, when you go to a police station or a police yard, a police facility, and you report of a missing person, the response that you usually get is that they will collect some information from you. And sometimes they want to know, or they will tell you the person will come. If after some time the person has not come back, let us know so we can follow up. And so these things are uh, usually the norm, but we, we, have to, we have to be careful not to uh, begin to apportion blips here and there. I, well, I am hoping, I'm one of the people hoping that uh, this remains that uh, the retreat won't be that of the missing girls. And also, let me put it out there that I think uh, I'm told, Intel tells me somebody, uh, one of the, another suspect has been arrested in a neighboring country. And so, this issue is still evolving, and so we've got to be able to uh, bring it somehow to a close. The police must be allowed to do uh, what is suspected of you know, uh, a criminal mm. uh, investigation, such as this. Uh, I'm not sure, even in the U.S., uh, these things have been in Britain, these things have been all over the world. It happens. And so, um, I mean, I, I tend to, you know, share in the pain of the family. And that notwithstanding, uh, if we say the police shouldn't do it international, I mean, uh, that, that would not be the right way to go. So I think they would have to tone down and uh, allow the police to do what is uh, needful. If mm. the police do what is expected and they think that they don't accept it, they, I mean, uh, these things are allowed. They would be, uh, they, they, uh, they can go ahead and get other forensic, uh, you know, laboratories to run checks to see whether it is true, the, the findings are true or the findings are not true. I think they, 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 we, the states, all of us will require them to allow the police to take samples from them so that we, we can bring closure to this. If it is not there, the young girls, we know. If it is the young girls, we know. So we know where we are. You're watching news today with me, Benis Abubedulan. So meanwhile, convener for the Concerned Mothers Association, Josephine Amu, says they are skeptical about revelations made by the police. All along, we were thinking that uh, since the police are doing the investigation, we, we will get a positive result out of the investigation. So when two days ago we heard that they found, they have discovered some body parts here and uh, they are assuming that uh, it is the missing girls. In fact, 
I felt very, very bad, very, very, very bad. Now the police have met with the family members and they have told the family members to be patient uh, because until they do the DNA test, we don't know who those bodies belong to. Does that make you feel uh, any, any better? Oh, I don't feel better still because even yesterday I was with one of the family members when the regional commander and his troop of policemen, about 40 of them, came to the uh, father. And they came just to officially uh, mention to the family the operation that they, they have done. According to the regional commander, he said the IGP sent them to the families to officially tell them what they have done so far. Uh, but looking at what is going on, for me and for we, the concerned mothers, we, we, we think, maybe I, I don't even know what to say. We think the police has not been able to do the best. Uh -huh. They have not done professional work. Because what, why I'm saying that is that uh, this issue started, I think, a year, a year ago. August is one year when the first girl uh, got missing. And they have been doing a search, they have been searching, they have been going around searching, investigating. And they keep on telling us that they are still doing, still doing something about it. You heard what Mami and Tiwa, the CID boss, said that uh, they know where the girls are. Also, that is why I've, I personally doubt what they, they, they have seen here. They, he, he, she said... They know where the missing girls are, and very soon they will just relocate them for them to reunite with their families. She came again to say that uh, what she said, she said that just to give hope to their families. And to give hope, I, she, in fact, what she said even rather dashed the little hope the families had, you see. And it has worsened the pain that the families are feeling. So you come down, you, you come to tell us that uh, now you have found some bodies and you think that they have to do some forensic uh, laboratory before they can even say whether it's the missing girls or what. In fact, for me, I... We'll be following this keenly. We've got a team of reporters led by Kodri Yangsen in Takade at the moment who will bring you all the reactions and all you need to know on this story. Away from that, Border Patrol officers will receive arms for their job and protection before Christmas this year. That's the assurance from the Comptroller General of the Ghana Immigration Service, Mr. Kwame Isia Tichi. He gave the assurance that they're inspecting the Saru Sola Kalba. Tangiri, Saru, Vuvu and Kalba unapproved routes yesterday in the Savannah region addressing some of the patrol officers. He said government has released funds for the purchase of arms for personnel at the borders and that is being currently shipped to Ghana. Every challenge there should be what, a solution yes. mm? and I'm going to work towards it with my uh, management members especially as for the arms we been complaining our government has been supplying arms and uh, procuring arms. It's been, it's been done. It's gone through the, the process. Now it's been shipped. So maybe within uh, maybe a month or two, it will land. Then we'll do the distribution, especially across uh, the border, the poorest borders of the country, like here. So, I mean, rest assured, you'll get the, the arms. But like I said earlier, on, it's the discipline of holding the arms. It should not tempt you to misbehave and with the pistols too it's also uh, 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 also being uh, uh, shipped so that should not be a problem the challenge is the is the is the is the motorbikes and the vehicles so we're going to work this towards that communication and the communication in fact uh, 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 we were asked to come up with our logistical requirements which we done through the ministry to government so it didn't work uh, upon. I don't want to talk too much and give you the assurance, but the assurance is that hopefully by close of uh, the year you see some uh, uh, wonders, you know. So, so don't worry, just keep working hard. The conditions and the terrains are, 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 are rough, that should toughen and hardiness, right? Now, Lancet Natural Resources Minister. Kweku Asomatrene has ordered the shutdown of the Ghana Manganese Company Limited until further notice. The closure would take effect Monday, 5th August. Uh, 5th August is in response to the company's inability to fulfill its financial obligations, which has resulted 
in over $300 million loss of revenue to the state. Sometime in January, the Ghana Manganese Company Limited was directed to hold its mining operations to enable the state undertake a thorough financial audit of its operations. I'm sure you remember uh, that my colleague, investigative journalist Kriti Nate, produced a piece on that. Well, earlier today, the Lands and Natural Resources Minister briefed the media. The findings have confirmed huge losses to the state. For instance, estimated losses to government of Ghana for the period 2010 to 2017 based on fair pricing model, utilizing best business practices, open source data, as well as information obtained from verifiable business intelligence centers include additional royalty taxes due, additional royalty taxes due, $12.8 million, additional corporate taxes due, $79 million, loss of dividends declared, $6.1 million, additional revenue residing offshore for period 2010 to 2017, no transfer pricing audit performed prior to 2017, $259 million. Also, an exclusivity agreement allegedly appointed Manganese Trading Limited, MTL, as the sole off-taker of the total volume of the manganese produced by GMCL. The agreement fixed the selling price, that is transfer price, of manganese ore to $2.4. GMCL has not shown strong commitment to value addition, in particular, the establishment of a smelter. There are also defaults by the company in the payments of annual mineral rice fees in excess of $4 million. These and several infractions, several other infractions, leave me no option as the sector minister than to close down the operations of GMCL until further notice. The company is therefore instructed to stop all mining, exploration, and export of minerals effective 6 August 2019. That is from tomorrow. The ministry, together with the Minerals Commission and other relevant stakeholders, will immediately commence discussions with Ghana Manganese to resolve these and all other outstanding issues in the course of the shutdown. Bringing you more details on this, apologies earlier, I said Monday 5th uh, is when the order takes effect. It's actually tomorrow, Tuesday 6th. Maxwell Baba was at that press conference and joins us now. Maxwell, beyond the order for the company to shut down, were there any discussions or revelations about sanctions? Yes, um, the minister mentioned that. Um, in fact, after the press briefing, um, he said, looking at the monies involved, um, these monies can actually um, be channeled into other sectors uh, of, you know, um, of the country. We can use it to develop our roads and other things. He talked about the additional rail taxes due, which is $12.8 million, um, the corporate taxes due, $79 million U.S. dollars, loss of dividends, $6.1 million. Basically, giving us a breakdown of all the, you know, monies, you know, um, involved. He says um, that although discussions would still be ongoing on how best to retrieve um, the money to government chest, they will. They will prosecute um, if need be. So anyone found culpable um, in this um, financial loss to the state will be prosecuted. But in the meantime, the discussion is ongoing to retrieve the money. Thank you very much, Maxwell. On that particular story we're just learning from a press organizer. You're watching... Uh Short...
Dennis Abu Beidulansa, and this is Joy News Today. Apologies for the earlier technical challenges. Thank you so much for staying out. President Akufado has charged Ghanaians to recognize the collective efforts played by various individuals towards the liberation of the country. Parliament earlier this year passed the Public Holidays Amendment Bill into law that earmarked August 4 as the day to celebrate all persons who contributed to Ghana's independence struggle. Today, August 5, was declared a holiday because uh, August 4 was a Sunday. And President Akufado, who spoke at a Founders Day luncheon for senior citizens yesterday, wants an end to what he calls, quote, needless controversy, unquote, over Ghana's past. Here's a news desk report. Kwame Nkrumah, later to become part of the big sick, is not present there, is that at that time, he was the United Kingdom. In one of many public speeches by top public figures, Speaker of Parliament Professor Michael Quay made a strong case against Dr. Nkrumah's enviable status as Ghana's founder. And it is imperative to echo loudly that Nkrumah was not the founder of Ghana. I consider him one of the founding fathers, something similar to Paul was not there when Christ gave the last order. Parliament was later asked to settle the debate through an amendment bill. Government says August 4 is an important day because the Aborigines Rights Protection Society was formed in 1897 with the United Gold Coast Convention formed on the same day in 1947. Two events that set Ghana's nationalist movement in motion leading to the attainment of independence on March 6, 1957. The opposition NDC in a statement says the day will no longer be celebrated once it returns to power. President Akufuado, however, wants an end to what he calls partisan considerations in Ghana's history. It is unfortunate that 62 years after independence, the history of these events continues to be embroiled in needless controversy due largely to partisan political considerations of the moment. It is time we rose above partisan considerations, set the record straight, recognize the collective efforts in gaining our freedom and independence from colonial rule, reject the trivialization of our past, and do right by our history. Ghana, we now have freedom. Ghana, land of freedom. Toils of the brave and the sweat of their labors. Toils of the brave which have brought freedom. That was a news desk report. Now, the people of Kunda Junction are perhaps the most excited in the OT region today. That's because they join 19 other communities that have been declared open defecation free in the Karachi East Municipality. Municipal Chief Executive for the area, Patrick Chati Himila, says the status achieved by this community has brought the municipality closer to achieving its target of being open defecation free. But here's what doubled the joy of residents at Kunda Junction at an event to celebrate their open defecation free status. World Vision Ghana commissioned a borehole to end decades of drinking from a disease infested river there. NS Menu visited the community and reports. Access to portable water remains a big challenge for many communities in Ghana. The effect of this is often manifest in their unhygienic practices. In most of these communities, open defecation is rife, taking a toll on the health of the people. One of such is Kunda Junction in the Karachi East Municipality. Joseph Ta is the District Environmental Health Officer. The situation was very terrible. In, in this defecation, defecating inside the bushes within the community, and uh, this in fact brought about a whole lot of diseases. You can mention cholera, diarrhea itself, you can mention typhoid fever, a dysentery, poliomyelitis, which were predominant in this community. 
But the people say the lack of potable water, or sometimes the absence of it, especially in the dry season, is a major contributory factor. The only source of water is the polluted Praga River. Some of the residents shared with me the difficulties they've had to face drinking, washing, and doing everything else with this river water. When poor is smart, you know, a do over a better nassa when you are diversa, and I just see some sort of a foul pan empty, sir. I could see into when you are not to you, a do almost over the nap of the same. Then I will be any see soon you want to be better. That one to over the nap or a pamu now with the America. During a hammer season, you go to the riverside, you yourself will dig some holes before you get water from it, and then uh, maybe night time you. Move from here to the riverside, we experience three snake bites because of uh, f the distance from house to the riverside. So no, because I never knew. Now, if you are going to go to the side, now, you saw me yako koko koko. Now, so so new fee. Obe yade. Obe san e san o di abe fee. Obe no mane e nyane. Adi chia. Obe se wa yari akwada se wa yari. Obe no ba akwada kuta. Nye na yo brema e. Then led me to the only source of water for the community, the Praga River, which sometimes run dry. So this is the Praga River that serves the over 300 people here at Kunda Junction, the community where I am now. Uh, this is the river where children. Uh, women and everybody else drinks from and this is the main source of water for the people just take a critical look and it goes without saying but it comes with implications obviously for their health but through the wash program of ngo world vision ghana the town has now been declared open defecation free and uh, open defecation free means that every household should be having a household toilet and within the community and the bushes, there should not be any trace of feces on the background in the open space. And every household toilet should have a hand washing facility. To ensure the situation is addressed permanently, World Vision on this occasion to celebrate the open defecation free status commissioned a mechanized borehole and donated it to the community. Crouchy Cluster Manager for World Vision Ghana, Edward Ola, urged the community to take good care of the facility. The community for say, borehole when near World Vision dear, and that MCE. What be a nupe and your well vision dear? A year kunda junction for moody Muna is a mushe so ye send ye munya mubenya who if I saw her. And to mama de in some of the somo, boho no ye, and to ne me de boho no esha monsem. Well, oja oba, this is some crunk on demon tea. The people are excited. Come near us. Anytime we want to fetch water, we can get it easy to drink. And then I think the most important thing is that it will uh, also prevent us from uh, some water borne diseases. So said the mama ya papa we dey mum say e dey ayi e bi ara so say am e ka sin so na ya nya na ma ni ji wan na me boa what today the story is different thanks to the intervention of world vision ghana the people of kunda can at any time walk from their homes to this mechanized borehole to get clean potable drinking water all they have to do is to just pump and as they pump they pump away all their troubles with water, from river blindness to Belhazia, and Estimino for join us.
You're watching Joe News today coming up shortly in business. The Chamber of Bulk Oil Distribution Companies advocates refurbishment of petroleum storage tanks as Ghana positions itself as a petroleum hub in the sub-region. Something that we're all working with the Ministry on and uh, to develop and I think that it's a fantastic idea that we, we, should, we should operationalize as quick as possible. Daryl Kwao has got details shortly to stay.